Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Rohan Khandelwal and you know since last week I've started a weekly quiz on my Telegram channel where I'll be posting 10 questions topic wise and then I'll be discussing those questions in a YouTube video so that you can go through the explanations. Now the questions are meant for FMGs, for PGs, for INICET exam, all three of them. So I've adjusted the difficulty level in such a way. And if you've already revised surgery, you can just solve these questions and listen to the explanations. If you're starting surgery, my recommendation would be to go through the marrow revision videos and then attempt these quiz questions. So the first quiz was on GIT and the first question which was there was that a patient with pain during defecation and presence of red blood on toilet paper, he comes to the OPD, he also complains of constipation and was diagnosed with a chronic anal fissure. What is the preferred procedure to manage this given condition? So they've already mentioned the diagnosis in the question and you can see the chronic anal fissure. We know that anal fissures are more common at 6 o'clock position which is the posterior midline. So that is where this fissure is and these fissures are extremely painful. That is why the patient has pain constipation. Now initially we do conservative management in terms of sits bath, laxatives, applying xylocaine jelly but if it does not work out then we can do a lateral anal sphincterotomy. Now lateral anal sphincterotomy we are cutting the internal sphincter because if we cut the external sphincter there can be incontinence which is why the internal sphincter is cut. Another surgery for anal fissures is anal advancement flap. Thier's procedure, you know, is for rectal prolapse, right? And this is a perineal procedure for rectal prolapse. Milligan Morgan is used for hemorrhoid surgery. And transanal resection is used for early cancers or polyps. Now, I've told you anal fissure is a breach in the continuity of the anal epithelium. Posterior midline is the most common. And the investigation of choice is external inspection. We don't carry out digital rectal examination because it is extremely painful. We initially try lifestyle management. If it does not work out, then we do SITS bath, right? Uh, SITS bath along with lifestyle management is initially advised. And if it does not work out, then we do surgery in terms of lateral anal sphincterotomy and anal advancement flap. You know, chronic anal fissure will have a skin tag or a sentinel pile. This is usually associated with a chronic anal fissure. The second question has also been asked many times in the exam. A patient is diagnosed with left-sided colon cancer. What is the most common presenting complaint? So, most common presenting complaint of left-sided colonic cancers. Left-sided colonic cancers are annular or apple core kind of growths and they will come early with irregular bowel habits with irregular bowel habits and because they are annular growths these patients will land up with obstruction and constipation so those would be the early features for left-sided lesions obstruction and constipation whereas right-sided lesions are ulcero proliferative and these lesions can bleed and when they bleed the patient can come with iron deficiency anemia right that is why any elderly patient who's coming with iron deficiency anemia we should always be careful and we should always try to rule out a right-sided colorectal cancer so the patient will come with constipation or early signs of bowel change in bowel habits. So right-sided lesions I told you are exophytic whereas left-sided lesions are napkin ring type of lesions. They are constricting. So if you go to a fancy restaurant you will see that the napkin has a ring around it and it is constricting the napkin. So the growth is also doing the same and if you do a barium in these patients for left-sided lesions, it is also known as apple core deformity and this has also been asked in the exam. The third question is a 48-year-old lady who has come with abdominal pain, weight loss, fever and loss of appetite. The barium image is shown what is the probable diagnosis here. So you can see that this is a barium meal follow-through 
BMFT barium meal follow through is good for the small bowel and for the ileocecal junction and you can see that this is the ileocecal junction and you can see that there is a narrowing or constriction here in the ileocecal junction right so there is a stricture in the terminal ilium right there is stricture in terminal ilium and the ileocecal junction is pulled up right icj is pulled up this is typically known as the goose neck deformity or the swan neck deformity and this can be seen in ileocecal tuberculosis which again is going to come with abdominal pain weight loss fever and loss of appetite right so these this sign of stricture of the terminal ilium can also be seen in crohn's disease but that was not mentioned as one of the options which is why here the answer is going to be ileocecal tuberculosis the fourth question is an 18 year old who presented with inability to swallow since last one and a half months leading to weight loss dysphagia is more with solids and there is no past history of similar episodes ct angiography is shown what is the most probable diagnosis so the patient is coming with dysphagia and dysphagia if they are showing you the ct angio they are indirectly hinting that it has to be a vascular cause and there is only one vascular cause which gives rise to dysphagia and that is dysphagia lusoria dysphagia lusoria is because of aberrant right subclavian artery so if you look at the ct image they had labeled it as arsa i had made sure that i write as arsa otherwise it would have been a difficult question just to diagnose on the ct right so this is dysphagia lusoria which is due to an aberrant right subclavian artery which can cause dysphagia and this dysphagia is usually intermittent and non progressive dysphagia which is there now question number 5 an infant is born with a history of polyhydroamnios in utero so the mother had polyhydroamnios and the child had difficulty in breathing immediately after birth examination showed frothing of the mouth a provisional diagnosis of a tracheoesophageal fistula is made which is fistula is most common so here we know that type c is the most common fistula and tracheoesophageal fistulae the mother will be having polyhydroamnios now a stands for atresia means both the ends of the esophagus are not communicating with each other b is when the proximal end communicates with the trachea distal end is blind ending c is the most common c is when the proximal end is blind ending but the distal end communicates with the trachea d is when both ends communicate with the trachea and e is when the esophagus is patent but still there is a communication e is also known as the h type now the child is going to come with respiratory distress excessive drooling of saliva which i had mentioned in the clinical scenario and the confirmatory test here is a contrast study which is iohexol is better than dinosil here a contrast study will delineate the anatomy of the fistula for h type and this was asked once in the exam the h type it is combined tracheoesophagoscopy and remember in a child whenever any congenital anomaly is detected always always rule out other congenital anomalies before you start managing the patient now question number 6 which of the following is not a feature of external hemorrhoids lined by columnar epithelium located proximal to the dentate line painful and excision is the preferred modality now external hemorrhoids are distal to the dentate line so this is wrong right this is a wrong thing and external hemorrhoids can be painful because they are below the dentate line they will have somatic nervous supply and they can be painful excision is the treatment modality this is correct a is also wrong because external hemorrhoids are lined by squamous epithelium and not columnar epithelium whereas internal hemorrhoids can be lined by transitional or columnar epithelium so in this question there are two answers or two options which are 
not true it is lined by squamous epithelium and they lie distal to the dentate line so please make sure in the pdf only one was there but i am telling you that there are two options which are wrong here now this is what external hemorrhoids look like you can see the hemorrhoids outside these are thrombose hemorrhoids which are there right and you need to know the four grades of hemorrhoids they've been asked many times in the exam grade one are only which bleed they don't prolapse grade two are the ones which prolapse out means they will come out but they will spontaneously go back inside three are which prolapse but need to be pushed inside and four is which remain prolapse one we just manage by lifestyle changes which are similar to what we discussed for anal fissures in the starting of the video grade 2 you have to do management for grade 1 plus we will either do banding or we will do sclerotherapy right and out of these two banding is better than sclerotherapy grade 3 and grade 4 the management is like grade 2 plus we have to carry out surgery and the latest surgery for hemorrhoids these days is stapler hemorrhoidopexy A febrile patient is brought to the hospital with complaints of severe abdominal pain. He is tachycardic on examination and CT shows the findings below. Which of the following is not a sign seen in the above image or the above disease? So actually what was here was that there was an inflamed appendix which was there. Now for some of you this might be difficult to just pick up inflamed appendix on a CT without more clues. So how do we solve this question otherwise? We look at the options. Now we know that Aron sign is a typical sign of appendicitis, right? And Aron sign is pain in the epigastrium. Tenhorn sign is when you pull the right testis, there is pain in the right iliac fossa, right? And you also had the bacillar sign. The bacillar sign is also for acute appendicitis, right? Bacillar sign was done earlier. It is not mentioned in the books. It is when the thumb is pushed posteriorly, this will cause the appendix to be pinched again the, against the iliac muscles and this can cause pain. So these three signs are of appendicitis. Balance sign is seen in splenic rupture right so balance sign is not a sign of appendicitis so we can even rule this out by elimination a male presented with bleeding during defecation and frank blood is seen a reddish mass is seen hanging from the anal opening it does not reduce spontaneously neither is reducible manually right so I told you which cannot be reduced either spontaneously or by manual reduction. This is a fourth grade hemorrhoid you can see here and this would require surgery which I have already mentioned to you. What is the instrument mentioned here? You can see this is a right angle retractor, a null self retaining retractor. This is known as a Langenbach retractor which is used for open cholecystectomy. Right, a modification of Langenbach is a Morris retractor. Morris retractor is wider than Langenbach and that is also used for open cholecystectomy. This one is known as a Zerni retractor or an Army Navy retractor where one side you have a solid right angle whereas on the other side you have two hook like things and there is some gap between them. So this is a Zerni's retractor. This is a Babcock's forceps right this is a Babcock's forceps and this Babcock's forceps what happens is that you can see there is some space here and in this space we can hold tubular structures tubular structures like appendix like fallopian tube vas can be held and because there is some daylight there it is non-traumatic this is a doyen's retractor a doyen's retractor you can see the curve it is curved uh, unlike it being right angle like Langenbach or Morris, this is curved and this is also used for retracting the bladder. 
A 45 year old patient comes with vomiting and severe abdominal pain. On examination, the abdomen is significantly distended and tender to touch. Hyper resonance is observed on percussion. X ray is shown below. What is the next step in the management? Right, so if you see the x ray in this case, this is a typical coffee bean sign which we are going to see. Right, coffee bean sign which we are going to see, and this coffee bean sign is suggestive of sigmoid volvulus. Now, some of you were saying that why isn't it cecal volvulus? Why is it sigmoid? So, let me explain to you why is it, a, why is this a case of sigmoid volvulus? So, whenever you have a case of sigmoid volvulus, you will also see other loops of large bowel, right? Large bowel would be seen. And you can see the loops of large bowel here. You can see the loop of large bowel here as well. So if the large bowel is distended, that means we are dealing with sigmoid volvulus. But if it was cecal volvulus, if the cecum was rotating, the bowel distal to it will be collapsed. So the large bowel will not be distended in that case. right? So that is one main sign which helps us in differentiating. Another sign is that the apex would point towards the right shoulder tip, right? So, apex of sigmoid volvulus points towards the right shoulder tip and I have told you, you will see dilated large bowel in which you will see hostrations. Hostrations don't go from one wall to the other wall completely. Unlike small bowel, small bowel you will have complete volvulae in the jejunum, right? In the jejunum. But hostrations don't go completely from one wall to the other. So, this is a typical sigmoid volvulus where you get a coffee bean sign, right? And these patients, sigmoid volvulus, it usually occurs because of a long and narrow mesentery, redundant sigmoid and a loaded sigmoid and anti-clockwise rotation is more common and this is common in patients who are on antipsychotic medications. Also, if you do a barium enema in these patients, you can get a bird's beak sign. Right. So these were the 10 questions which I wanted to discuss. All of them are important. And like I said, they cater to all students who are preparing whether for FMG or for PG. Now the next quiz will be posted on 8th February on my telegram channel that is hepatobiliary and pancreatic. And I'll be posting the YouTube video the week after that. So you can join the telegram channel and you can answer the questions there. All the best.